Brooks Kepka. Uh, Brooks, welcome to your third uh, career Ryder Cup. A lot of people have been asking about the first tee this, this uh, you know, uh, the first time out there and that. But I kind of just want to ask about Hazeltine and your first match victory. Uh, the sense of accomplishment that with put, putting a number on the board. I think you were with Brent Snedeker. Um, and just how good that feels to, for the first time, you know, put a tally on the American side. Yeah, it was probably the most nervous I've ever been. Um, was on the first tee. Um, it was good. I think I went out. Uh, I didn't play the morning match, so I went out and watched the guys tee off and was kind of there and got to like soak in the atmosphere, which was pretty cool. Um, I got chills. I was I think I was standing next to Tiger and uh, maybe Davis. I was like, how cool is this? So. Um, yeah, it's it's exciting, and you know, to be able to go out in the first first match that I played in and win. Um, I thought Brant was the perfect partner. I loved it. Um, he was so he's so perfect for me. You know, um, energetic. Uh, didn't really care if I sprayed it, and he's a good putter, so that uh, that's usually a good combo. That is. All right, let's hit some questions here. We got a quick hand here over number three. Hey Brooks. Um, Stricker was in here yesterday talking about how one of his main goals for the week for you guys was to reduce the number of obligations to kind of keep things more relaxed and calm. I was curious if you've noticed a difference compared to prior Ryder Cups. Has it been a little bit easier? Yeah, I think so. I think that, uh, I think COVID kind of made it that way a little bit, but uh, I think he's done a good job of, of keeping everything kind of on the low because it is a busy week. Um, we've got a lot of things. Like I can't, you know, I don't bring my physio just because I know I don't have time for it. So uh, little things like that. But it's, it's definitely uh, a lot easier. Uh, I think pretty much everybody has is, is kind of noticed that. And it, it's been great. I think you can kind of see her. Maybe, you know, that's kind of why. I don't know, maybe dead on Sunday. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. But um, I think it's definitely, definitely a lot better this year. Over here on your left, Jeff, please, 19. Brooks, uh, Strick was expressing to us that you feel 100% health-wise. How, how long have you felt 100%? And are there any limitations at all this week as far as how much you can play? I mean, I'm like glass. So I wouldn't say I'm 100%. I mean, my left knee, right knee, I'm broken, man. But, uh, no, I mean, I feel fine. I feel as good as, as I've felt in a long time. Um, you know, a lot of it is, you know, over the past – week and a half. I did a lot of work on it. Um, Derek Samuel, my trainer, um, we were down. He was down with me for about eight days. So um, able to kind of work everything out and, and make sure it's fine. But I feel good and I'm ready to go as much or, or as little as they want. No, no worries of going 36 in a day or? No. Yeah. I'm good. Straight across to Rex. Brooks, going back to kind of the alternate shot deal. I mean, statistically, it's just a format the United States has struggled in. But do you feel like it's a format that you enjoy and that you guys like going out and playing? Yeah, I do. I, I like it. Uh, it. It's just different. It's, you know, it's tough to build a rhythm. I think for me, I didn't play on any teams growing up. So I didn't play on any Junior Ryder Cup, Walker Cup. I didn't play any of that. So this is like the first time I've done a team thing other than college. So it's it's def and I never played alternate shots so until I got here. But it's um, you know I think some of the guys probably have that luxury because they played Walker Cups and stuff like that, so they might have a better idea. But I, I like it. It's fun. It's different. Um, it's just tough to tough to kind of build a rhythm. You know, you hit one good shot and you're going to wait 15 minutes before you hit the next one. Um, but yeah, I don't see. At the end of the day, it's just who plays better. And it seems obvious, but had you ever played alternate shot before your first team event as a professional? No, I don't think so. I don't think there were any junior events where it was alternate shot. So I think 16 was the first time. If I played alternate shot, I can't even remember. I think I did, but yeah, yeah. I think that was the first time. Right here, number 20. Hey, Brooks. Um, how would you describe uh, Strix as a, as a captain and just kind of what are some of his best attributes and virtues that he's bringing to the table for you guys? I think he cares so much. Um, he's very passionate. You can see that maybe not outwardly, but when you're inside the team room or, or talking to him personally, it's it's very obvious. He's just got a big passion for for the game, big passion for all of us as players, uh, you know, the, the vice captains. Um, he, he just truly cares a lot, and um, he's a softie. I was, I was going to my follow-up to that because he's a crier, obviously, as yeah. we all know. 
uh, you know, is, is there a part of, you know, and obviously you want to win for any captain you're playing for, but because of how emotional he is about that, and obviously he's here in Wisconsin and whatnot, mm -hmm. is, how much do guys want to win for him and, and make him ball his eyes out on, uh, on Sunday? Yeah, it'd be nice to see him cry. I think, uh, you know, that'd be, that'd be awesome just because I know how much time he's put in. You know, as a captain, you got to put in so much time for, I mean, at, at least a year and a half. I don't know because we had an extra year. I don't know how much time they actually put into it other than that. But, um, you know, it's, it's at least 18 months of hard work, um, you know, growing up in Wisconsin. There, there's a lot of things that just kind of are coming together where it would be the perfect storm if, if we kind of if we were to win, um, you know. So I think everybody knows that, and everybody wants to, you know, just play well. Straight back and 26. Hey Brooks, you said you haven't played uh, many team competitions, so I'm curious what the transition's been like for you going from you know golf as an individual sport to this team concept. It's it's different. It's it takes a little bit of adjusting, but once you once you get out there, it's it's the same thing as competition. Just go put the ball in the hole as quickly as possible, hit the best shot you can, or you know if you're in trouble, get it back, um, or your partner or whatever. It's just it's it takes a little bit of adjusting, but um, you know it's tough. I mean, my whole life I just played an individual sport and you go to a team, so it, it is different. But uh, I enjoy it. I think it's fun. It kind of brings you back to a little bit of college, to be honest with you. Because, I mean, we're not playing alternate shot or best ball or anything like that, but it is, you know, that team uh, camaraderie. Going to go off on your right eight. Your high bricks. Why do you think Team USA are going to win this week? What do you think the potential strengths of your team and any potential weaknesses in the European team? I think there's a lot of guys playing well. Um, you know, Patrick's been playing really well. Um, Bug's been playing really well. Um, there's a lot of guys that have... I've played, you know, Jordan's Jordan's playing great. Um, you, you can see it. I think at the end of the day, or I guess at the end of the week, it's, you know, someone's got to win, someone's got to lose, and it's just who plays better. So um, it comes down to, you know, with the guy, eight guys you send out every day, are they going to play the best that they can, and, and do they play the best of their ability? And if they do, then that side's going to win. Brief follow-up. Can you just describe your current relationship with Bryson DeChambeau? Yeah, I mean, we're on the same team together. We've we've had dinner almost every night as a team. Um, I've been in, got here Monday, so we've we're all everyone as a team is interacting, everybody um, participating in conversations, doing everything we need to do. Front right two. Have you uh, have you gotten to know anybody better this week that you maybe haven't spent that much time with in the past, or do you feel like you just know all these American guys really well by this point anyway? Uh, I would say this year I probably know them a little bit better than because it is a younger core group of guys. Um, I'd say the only guy that I probably didn't know from junior golf or amateur golf, college, all that stuff was Colin. Maybe that was kind of the one. But the rest of them, I mean, I've played since we've been – 12 years old to to now so we already kind of have a pretty good relationship and um it's just a younger younger core group of guys than it's been in the past where you know coming in my first one I didn't know Brant that well I didn't know Bubba that well there, there's a lot of you know I was just coming out on tour so it was completely it was a different scenario and have you stayed away from the ping pong table given the knee I haven't played any ping pong man <laughs> I haven't been in the uh the team room just chilling too much just you know, we do. I know the obligations are cut down, but it's still, um, I still got long days. We're going to go back uh, left, Bob, 25. Uh, uh, Brooks, Bryson the other day, um, he sort of intimated that there might be something with you and him beyond the Ryder Cup. It was very vague. Um, he just sort of teased it. I'm just wondering if you could elaborate on that, if there's anything close or is there going to be some sort of a competition, or or, or was he, or, or or did he mean something completely different? I have no idea. I don't know. I I didn't listen to the comments or hear what he said, so I, I have no idea. Thank you. All right, let's shoot over to seven over here on your right. Hey, Brooks. Brooks, you, you, you've spoken in the past about how you enjoy sort of trash talking and stuff like that. With with this, and you haven't been able to do it, but with this kind of event, with the atmosphere and everything like that, is it going to be hard to kind of? You know, keep keep your mouth shut, or you're going to get involved in that kind of thing, just to sort of get everyone going. 
I don't trash talk anybody. Doesn't matter. I mean, we've all done it. We do it in the team room. It's just all, you know, everybody out here is competitive. Everybody understands it, and it's just it's part of it. Um, doesn't matter what we're doing. Like you said, even if it's ping pong, I haven't played ping pong, but, I mean, those guys are trash talking while they're playing ping pong. Just, you don't take it personal when it's, you know, part of it. 24, Doug, right behind me. Brooks, on the, on the uh, interview with Golf Digest about, about the Ryder Cup and, and Zinger saying that you should give up your spot if you don't really love it to someone who does, I'm curious what you thought of, of those comments and is there any concern that, that that feeling is shared by fans or anyone else based on what they read or think? I never said it was negative. Y'all spun that that way. I never said it was negative. I said it was different. Like I said, I've never played any of these team events. I didn't play Walker Cup, didn't play Junior Ryder Cup, never played anything. So I said it's different. And that doesn't mean it's bad. Y'all spun it that way. Well, I, I, get, I realize that. I mean, and do you love the Ryder Cup? Do you look forward yeah, to it? Yeah, I enjoy it. I think okay. it's, it's a lot of fun to play. I think it's, like I said, I wouldn't be nervous on that first tee if I didn't care. So question to that is could are, is there any part of you that's concerned that that people will perceive that uh, as they look at you playing this week um i don't know a lot of it you know i can only do my job and then y'all report or whatever your opinion or side might be so you guys you guys are kind of already spun it negatively so it kind of is going to trickle to the fans because you guys are kind of our only outlet besides social media um so it's how you guys take it and spin it and you guys spun it negatively. So um, whatever they think is kind of be off what they read, whether you write an article, whether you, whatever you're doing, you know, they read that stuff. So it's all kind of, if your guys' opinion, they're going to take that side a little bit more. Okay, back right, number nine. Uh, Books, you were talking about how well um, the, the American team are playing as, uh, as individuals. On previous occasions, Europe have often managed to be more than the sum of their parts. Is there more to match play tournament golf sometimes than just hitting individual form? Yeah, maybe a little bit, but I don't think it's too much. Um, someone's got to lose, man. There's two, there's two teams playing, so there's going to be a winner and there's going to be a loser. So, um, you know, it just comes down to who plays better. Um, no, I think it's as simple as that. I think sometimes people look into it a little too much. Um, whether it be, you know, guys playing a lot, you know, playing five in a row out here or, you know, four weeks in a row, whatever. You know, there's different things. Um, they kind of depend. But at the end of the day, it's just who plays better. I mean, you can see a guy wins one week and then the next week misses the cut or he's missed seven cuts in a row and then goes out and wins. And it's just, hey, you play good that week and, you know, you get a bunch of guys that play better than the other guys and you're going to have a winner. We're going to wrap it up here, Brooks, on your left, uh, Jeff, 19. Brooks, you would know Daniel better than most with your college ties. I'm just curious how far back you two go and what can he bring to a competition like this? He's fiery. I like it. I think he's um, maybe not on the outside. He doesn't show up, but I think maybe more so behind closed doors and knowing him personally. Um, he's definitely very competitive. He's funny. Um, and... Uh, I just like the fact that he's always ready to go. It doesn't matter if he's good at, I mean, ping pong, chess. I mean, it doesn't matter. He's he's ready to go, and he's ready to kick your butt, which I think is awesome. You two would pair well together? Yeah, we could. I mean, we've paired at um, Liberty, I believe, the President's Cup. I think we paired there um, in alternate shot. But that was, I mean, it was fun. I enjoyed it. I mean, I've known him for years and years and years, so it's pretty cool to look back and, he was showing me a photo yesterday of us in college and us now. And man, we look so young. I feel old now. All right, Brooks, thanks for the time. Thanks for We were with our good friend Tony Finau. Tony, welcome to your second career Ryder Cup. Um, you played here in 15, had a good finish, T10. Um, that was played in August. Temps were probably in the, the low 80s and such. And here we are, crisp, almost fall lake conditions, a little more of a breeze. Um, how different are those two golf courses if you can, you know, take yourself back and, and also be here this week? Yeah, I, I'm trying to think back to 2015. I, I remember the golf course um, just as a whole, 
you know, I remember the holes, kind of what they look like, the shape of them. Um, I don't really remember how they how it played in 2015. I don't know if that's my memory. <laughs> I'm getting old, or um, so I kind of had a almost a blank canvas. I felt like you know when we had our practice last week coming out, it was nice to be out here again and see. There's there's quite a few blind shots on this golf course, so I think just seeing the lines and being confident over where you're aiming on some of those holes are very important. Um, it's still kind of the same season, I, I, I would say, um, just in that we played it in August in 15. You know, we're in late September now, so still pretty close to the same season. <laughs> so I don't remember it playing crazy different. Um, I know it's a lot cooler. I don't remember wearing a jacket right. um, when we played in 15. But, um, yeah, I, I would. my memory wasn't great of 15, just kind of remembering how the golf course played. But it's nice to have come back to a place that I have played, have good memories from. Um, I played really nicely in 15 uh, for at least three rounds, and 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 it's it's just fun to be back to a golf course that I've played before and have have great memories at. All right, let's hit the ground here for some questions. We'll start front right two. Um, yeah, is this a, a more tiring week than other tournament weeks? Just because you know you just have to be more on the whole time with you know teammates or dinners or different obligations. Uh, I, I would say in a sense, yes, uh, because you do have to be on quite uh, quite often. But, man, it's where you want to be, though. You know, it's it's a it's kind of a mix of both. You know, like I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. You know, that's for sure. I'd, I wouldn't want to be at home uh, um, in the situation I was in, and, you know, maybe watching. So it's it's worth it's worth what the what the week brings. And that's, um, you know, a lot of team dinners. Uh, you know, going out in, in groups, a lot of things that we're not as accustomed to on a normal week. But when you're only dealing with it for one week and it's the Ryder Cup, we're all up for it and we're all up for the challenge. And it ends up being a, a great time. I get to know a lot of these guys better than I know them just on a, on a normal PGA Tour week or, uh, or playing major championships, whatever it is. So just getting to know the guys, um, our wives getting to know each other better, um, makes for good feelings all around. And, um, Whatever tiredness we're feeling throughout the week, um, I think gets trumped just by being here and, and participating in the Ryder Cup. All right, straight across Rex four. Tony, this would be, a, I guess, a four ball related question if you end up in one of those formats. Is there a whole specific hole out here or combination of holes where you can take advantage of your length maybe that you wouldn't do normally? Yeah, well, I think there's a handful of holes. It just depends on the wind. You know, like if it's coming off the coast, uh, a lot of the holes are going to be playing into the wind early. So those are the holes that I think, you know, a, a someone like me can take advantage of. Um, if it's if it's a trade wind, which is coming out of the south, um, which I think it's going to be this weekend, then you're going to have to take advantage of the holes kind of along the water, um, you know, from starting from six or, yeah, six all the way down to 13. Most of those holes go the same direction. So I, I would say those are the holes that you got to take advantage of because you're going to be playing those into the wind. So it's it's mostly wind dependent. I feel like uh, when it comes to length, um, my length I think is a is a good good asset to have uh, on this golf course. And I think the length of our team, um, just in general, is a great thing uh, on this golf course. Front left, Jeff. Tony, uh, Patrick Harrington was in the other day, and he, he traces a lot of Europe's success to the fact that. They grow up trying to play on teams and playing different sports. You come from a background like that, playing different teams. How, how does it translate for you this week into being successful? Yeah, I think camaraderie is a big thing in team sports. Um, kind of having that oneness, I think, is, is a big thing. Uh, a lot of the mojo uh, of a team atmosphere, I think, is a big deal when you're playing team sports. Um, they seem to have that for some reason and maybe that's you know to Podrick's point kind of them you know I know football is a big big sport there a lot of them you know played football growing up and uh, a lot of team sports but the way I look at our team is a lot of our guys have as well and we have a great young hungry team I think a lot of us play team sports growing up myself included but there's definitely that oneness that comes um, from being involved in team sports at some point in your life and and again I think most of us have have that type of um, experience from playing some team sports, maybe more more so than what, what most of you guys would think. 
the 20. Mark. Hey, Tony. Um, can you speak to uh, what Strix has meant to this team and, and, and what kind of a captain he is uh, and have a follow on that? Yeah, Strix, uh, I mean, Strix has meant everything to our team as our captain. <clears throat> He's such a great leader. Um, and, I, and I say that I think mostly just uh, through his example. Um, he's, he's got this chill confidence to him, you know, and I think when I say that, most of you know what I'm talking about. He's not, uh, he's not, he doesn't talk a lot, um, and, you know, in our team meetings, he, he you know, hasn't uh, too much, but you can tell the energy he has for the Ryder Cup, the passion he has for it, um, just, uh, just, about, just, just by the way he goes about his business. And he's got this quiet confidence, and and I think that's something that we've all learned from, and myself included, as a player, to play under someone with that type of confidence, and um, and just the passion that he has for the Ryder Cup. You feel it. Um, this is a huge, this is a big one. I feel like for our squad, this Ryder Cup. It's a big one for our team. Um, it's a big one for for Strix. This is a place that he loves, uh, Wisconsin, Whistling Straits. This are this is his home. So uh, we've got a a task in front of us where we have an opportunity to do something really special for our team, for our country, but especially for Strix. Uh, I think we have that in the back of our minds, and um, and we want to win this one not only for everything involved, but especially for our captain. Now, I don't think there are statistics for this, but I, I'm quite certain I think he's cried after every time he's won. <laughs> he's obviously, as you know, is a crier. I mean, yeah. you know, as knowing how emotional he is, how much do you would you like to see him bawling his eyes out on Sunday? And, and uh, and, uh, and is there just a, you know, you kind of addressed a little bit there, but just how much you guys want to win for him? Because yeah, it would, it would mean the world for all of us, you know, as uh, I, I'm sure I speak for all my teammates, you know, for us to win for Strix, we wouldn't mind seeing all that emotion and sensitivity that he brings uh, to the table on Sunday evening. So um, it'll be a cool thing. We've got a tall task in front of us. We know that. We've got a great European team that we're up against. Um, but we've got a, we've got a great, I've got a great group of 11 guys that, I, you know, that I'm, going to go to battle with these next few days. And we've had some great practice sessions, gotten to know each other really well, got a great group of young guys. As one of the older guys, it's crazy for me to say, in 2018, when I was on that team, I was one of the younger guys. And now, just a short three years later, I'm the third oldest on the team. Uh, I think it tells you where American golf is headed. We've got so much great young talent. Um, and we've got a handful of that young talent on our team already this year. So really exciting um, that that's the case. And, uh, you know, our goal is not only to change the mold this year, but the history of the Ryder Cup for us, I think, means a lot to us young guys um, and to our younger guys. And, and hopefully we change the mold here moving forward, not only this Ryder Cup, but in many Ryder Cups to come. Seven on your right, Tony. So, Tony, a lot's been made of the, uh, of the crowd this week, predominantly going to be an American crowd, very, if any, Europeans. I mean, from, does that work as a positive for you? And from a European perspective, can it be... A negative having you know pretty much the whole crowd against you from you know does that alter would that alter their mindset you think yeah i mean it, it goes both ways I, I i definitely love you know having the opportunity to play in front of our home crowd that's something that i personally haven't had both of the cups i've been a part of international teams Ryder cup in paris and the president's cup was which was in melbourne um australia so i i personally haven't had the opportunity to play in front of our crowd so that's something that I'm really excited about. I've had, I felt the love already this week in the practice rounds, but to get out there in competition, I know it's going to be a whole different type of energy um, from our fans, and that's something that I really look forward to. I think that's going to play um, into a, into our into our favor uh, as Americans, um, just to have that energy. And momentum is a big thing in sports. That's something I know about team sports for sure. Uh, momentum is a big thing, and so the team that has the momentum, I think, early is uh, going to fare well. And I think, it's always an I think it's always an advantage to play at home. So I think um, hopefully that plays, plays well into our hands. If we're behind early, I think it still plays into our advantage because our crowd can um, kind of cheer louder or whatever the case is for, uh, for, for us as we play. All right, Doug, 24. Tony, you, you said something interesting, I thought, about this is a big one for us. And you mentioned Strick, and then you mentioned about, it seemed like about 15 other things in the course of a five-minute <laughs> monologue there. Well done. What, what stands out? Why is this, uh, outside of Strick and Wisconsin, where we are, why is this so big? Um, or or, or what, what makes it big in your mind? And kind of as a, as a reversal of that question, what would happen if you guys lost? 
and why would that be so crushing? Well, the change of, for me, the, the change of culture, you know, we've got a whole new team. We have a team with no scar tissue. Um, there's only a few, there's only a handful of us that has even played in a Ryder Cup and a few of those, we have winning records. So we actually don't have guys on our team that have lost a lot in Ryder Cups. Um, so I, what, I, what I mean by this is a big one is we've got a whole new team. We've got a whole different group of young guys that are hungry. You know, they're, I see, you guys see six rookies. Man, in this team room, I don't see any rookies. I see six, you know, I, have, I see 12 guys that are confident and none of us are wide-eyed and we want to win. You know, I think mean, that's the end, at the end of the day. I, that's what I see when I'm in that locker room. I see guys beaming with confidence and, and really hungry to win. And that's, that's refreshing. And, and I'm not saying that I didn't see that in Paris, you know, but there's a certain feel, I feel like. And that's what, the only reason I say that's a big, that this is a big one is because I think the culture of American golf is changing in that you guys have seen they were so much younger. This is the youngest team I think we've ever had by a long shot. And so I think that the culture of what we want to bring, again, not only at this Ryder Cup, but in many Ryder Cups to come, um, we've had, I think, some publicity about Americans not uh, having the camaraderie maybe that the Europeans have or not have the interest in playing in the Ryder Cup. That's not the case. You know, I don't think that's the case. Um, they've outplayed us in, in quite a few Ryder Cups. But that's the mold we want to change moving forward, and that's why I think I say this is a big one. And then for us that have been a part of the teams, the five guys I think that are on this team that were in Paris, um, it's hard to watch another team celebrate in front of you. you know, that's something that I had to do in Paris in 2018. Jordan was there, DJ, JT, and Bryson. So I think there are five of, five of the 12 of us. Um, this is a big one because we don't want to experience that again. And to... To experience that on their home turf, I think that was a tough one. If we were to experience that here on our home turf, where we're watching them celebrate on our home turf, I think that's going to be a hard pill to swallow. So um, with that being said, there's that extra motivation, I think, or um, extra drive to change the culture of American golf, and we have that opportunity this week. Would it be, would it be though, Tony, a huge setback if you have this, this new culture and this young team and still don't get it done? Uh, you can look at it as a setback. You know, Brooks said it earlier. I was just, you know, standing there watching uh, his last few remarks. There's going to be a winner. There's going to be a loser um, at the at the end of this week. There's always going to be positives to draw from from losing. You know, if that were the case for Americans uh, later this week, um, that's something that I've dealt with a lot in my career, overcoming it. You know, adversity. That's something huge. We're going to be able to deal with that if that if that time comes. Um, but I but I see a change in culture. I see a change in in, in American teams. And starting with this week, uh, hopefully the, the culture of us um, not getting the job done at the Ryder Cup in the last handful changes this week. Thank you. Yeah, hi, Tony. Just on similar sort of thing, has the captain used any sort of motivational techniques or anything that mm. you think have worked this week? Are you anticipating anything tonight that, uh, to bring the team together? Yeah, no, he, he hasn't really done anything like that. Um, you know, I think he's, again, he's got that quiet confidence to him, Strix has, and uh, I think we're all just excited for the opportunity we have in front of us. It's such a special week on so many different levels. We get to represent our country, so many great people in the game of golf. Um, the PGA of America, I mean, there's so many great, um, great things and people that we're representing this week. Um, just to have that opportunity, I think, is really exciting for all of us. I don't, you know, I don't anticipate any, any, you know, motivational speeches or, or anything like that. Um, I think we're we're motivated enough as a team, and um, and you know, come tomorrow morning, we'll be ready to play. We are joined by Daniel Berger. Daniel, welcome to your first career Ryder Cup. Um, you had a great year this year. Finished third in one statistic. I want to ask you about uh, birdie to bogey ratio. It was almost two to one. Third on the tour. But on the surface, uh, that would seem to reflect, as it reflects your game, that that might translate well into match play. Is that your hope? Uh, is that the type of game you have? Yeah, I mean, I, listen, I think uh, make more birdies and less bogeys is a good, uh, is a good stat. But um, especially out, out here, you, you know, you have to make birdies. And uh, 
I think uh, bogey avoidance is going to be big and, and an alternate shot that's going to be tough, but uh, hopefully the conditions are, are, uh, are challenging and I think that suits you know, Team America. All right, let's hit the floor for some questions. How about Jeff here over yeah. on my right? Danny, a lot of folks uh, just feel you're, you are built perfectly for this event. Uh, why is that? Well, I think I'm fierce. I'm, I'm competitive. Um, I think I got a taste of the team environment at, at the President's Cup at uh, Liberty National, and um, it brought out a different side of me that I didn't really knew, know that I had. Um, so I'm imagining that this is going to be times 100. But I'm excited for it. I'm excited to represent uh, the United States of America and to be a part of a great group of uh, captains and assistant captains and teammates and guys that you're usually competing against on a day-to-day -day basis. And now, you know, you're, you're working with them to achieve a goal, which is something that, you know, as individual athletes, we don't get very often. So it's a, it's a cool experience, and it's something that, I'm, that I've looked forward to for a long time. What about the match play dynamic? What about it do you love as far as just having one or two opponents that you're looking across from, and those are the guys you got to take down today? Yeah, I kind of equate it to tennis, which is something that I grew up playing, where it's you against uh, you know one other guy, and you don't you don't worry about uh, the other 151 players in the field. It's just uh, one mission, and that's to to beat the guy that you're you know teeing off against. Which is uh, it's a different environment than what we're used to. So uh, I think I got better at match play having played you know the Presidents Cup, and then uh, you know this year at the at the match play. You know I figured out some things that uh, that I think are going to help me uh, this week. Straight across to Rex, number four. You mentioned statistics, and I know Steve has used some of them. Is there, any one, is there one that stood out to you? I know he said he used them as far as trying to come up with his pairings. Is there anything that he told you that made it, maybe might have surprised you? Um, I don't think any of it surprised me. I think a lot of the stuff that we went over, um, I had known that those were kind of my strong suits. And uh, I think uh, in the end, statistics are important, but I think a lot of what makes a good team is how you gel with your partner and, and how you uh, – um, how you guys get along. So I think that's, that's a big factor in, in, in how the performance is going to go, is how you and your partner uh, team up together. And what did you figure out at the match play, if you don't mind me asking? Um, I think that match play is just such a different um, beast compared to stroke play that um, you, you really are looking at your opponent and you're, and you're strategizing based on where he hits it. And um, I think in my younger years playing the match play, I was – uh, too focused on, on trying to play the golf course and not play the opponent, and that's the difference for me. All right, we're going to swing over to five. Uh, there we are, right in the same neighborhood there. Hi. Uh, speaking of tennis, uh, did you talk to your dad at all about that dynamic of his Davis Cup experience and going in an individual sport into a team environment within that sport? You know, a little bit. My dad, uh, we, we talk a lot, but, you know, a lot of his advice is, uh, not golf related. So, um, you know, obviously one of my biggest goals was to, to make a Ryder Cup team. Um, ha having him had played the uh, the Davis Cup, which is kind of the Ryder Cup of tennis. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, they're just so different sports that it's tough to really equate the uh, the two. We're going to go to number eight right behind there. Right there. What gives you the confidence that Team America are going to win this week? What do you, what do you think are your, your team's biggest strengths? Well, I think everyone's playing great golf right now, and that's that's really the key to um, to winning points. And uh, I think that uh, there's not one guy that I wouldn't want to be paired up with. You know, there's 11 other players that you could throw with me, and I would feel completely confident and comfortable and, and trustworthy that if they had to hit a big shot or make a big putt, that they could do it. So I think that's a that's a big key for us. Straight back here, Daniel, 23. You said some of your dad's advice, most of it wasn't golf related. What's the biggest thing you kind of learned from him just seeing? What's the biggest advice he's given you that's helped you in your career? Then? Hard work, um, dedication, uh, putting the time in. I think uh, I've said this before. I don't think, you know, I'm the biggest. I'm not the strongest. I'm not the fastest golfer out here, but I'll, I'll work any of them. And that's, I think, my biggest uh, asset. Jeff, on my on your left. You know, Tony, before you was talking about the changing culture of American golf, and you have so many younger, fresh faces here. Uh, as you guys, you, you know, for you maybe looking in on this event from the outside before now, is it kind of mystifying to see the results and how USA hasn't had success here? Yeah, I mean, I've tried not to focus on on the on the losses, and and we've I've spent a lot of time watching some video of 
of uh, of their you know successes, the '99 Ryder Cup, where you know Justin Leonard made that putt and you know Team USA running onto the green. But I think it's uh it's definitely become younger. You know, you look at all the faces on Team America, and they're they're just very young guys. You know, um, I think Dustin's the oldest at 37 or whatever. So um, I think the the notion that you know rookies can't come out here because they don't have the experience is can kind of be thrown out the window because you know all these guys are competing at the biggest events the major championships um, and winning big golf tournaments and and that's all it comes down to is is being able to perform at the highest level straight across number five and just on the six rookies um, is there any particular kind of camaraderie between that group of you within the team or I mean how is there a dynamic uh, among you um, I would say if you're asking if there's like any rookie hazing, not really. But uh, no, I mean, listen, there's there's the guys that uh, have played multiple Ryder Cups, Dustin Johnson, Brooks Kepka, that uh, Jordan Spieth, that we're all looking for for advice if we have any. But uh, we know what we have to do and how we have to prepare to play well, and and uh, and that's what we're gonna do. Uh, seven. You, right you, you touched on it in the uh, just earlier, but is it gonna be? Are you making a sort of? Um, trying to keep your emotions in check is going to be quite difficult. Have you kind of got anything planned to try and do that? Or are you just going to sort of go with the atmosphere because it's going to get pretty pretty raucous out there? No, I'm excited for it. Honestly, the toughest part about this week is is waiting to tee off on Friday. Like, I'm ready to go. I want to play golf. Uh, I want to play as many times as I can. And I feel like that's the mindset for everybody. We just want to play. Uh, no one wants to sit. Um, there will be occasions where players are sitting, but I know they'll be ready to go when their name's called. Rex, four. Nope. Remember the first time you you played against Brooks in a tournament? I'm guessing it was in junior golf, probably. Probably college golf. Yeah, I don't think. You know, he was a little older than me, so he would have he would have been uh, in the older divisions, or he would have been you know kind of past me in in junior golf stuff. You guys have qualifying rounds at FSU. Yeah, we had qualifying. I mean, he, Brooks was really good in college. I mean, he was a first team All American, and I was a freshman, so I definitely didn't have that same level of play, but. Um, I started to play better toward the end of my freshman year when, it, you know, ACCs, regionals, nationals. Um, so, I mean, yeah, he's he was a very good college golfer. I'm just curious if you guys had any kind of bouts during qualifying. I mean, mm. just where you guys would go head to head on the course. No, he was definitely more. He was definitely a better golfer. I mean, when I was there my freshman year. He was a senior. You know, he was he was just a better golfer than I was. I feel like, you know, I kind of developed late. Uh, my second year in college is where I really started to pick things up and started to, you know, become better. And uh, kind of the rest is, has gone the way I thought it would. Right next door, number three. Just out of curiosity, how important is it to get off to a good start with the, the short four on one, the par five on two, and then the par three on three? Yeah, I think those are key holes. I think an alternate shot, those are going to be key holes. I think, um, the tougher part of the golf course is on the back nine. And uh, so you're going to see some birdies early on in alternate shot format. And then it's going to kind of be more of holding on toward the end. Um, I just think that the back nine presents a lot more challenges than the front nine does. One more question about the tennis and playing doubles. You said you, you, you reminded you of it, uh, m mostly of foursomes, I would imagine. But um, what, uh, what do, what, similarities do they have that you drew from uh, as you walk in that room or you did a few years ago in Australia? Well, I played in, in Liberty National. Liberty, in I'm sorry. York. But, um, you know, tennis is is a very individual sport. I didn't play much doubles, but um, and I wasn't that great of a tennis player, but uh, people somehow think I am. But, uh, no, listen, it comes down to, to being prepared and, and – um, showing up on the first tee ready to go. And um, I think the early practice session that we did here on Sunday and Monday uh, last week was, was a huge key for us. I think uh, like yesterday I didn't, play, I didn't play golf. I just walked and chipped and putted a little bit. And uh, I think I wouldn't have been able to do that had I not been here early to see the golf course. I mean, I played the course at the PGA Championship in 15, but, uh, you know, that was a long time ago. So um, we're all ready to go. We're, we're, we're ready for that first tee shot on Friday. We're with Harris English. Harris, uh, welcome to your first career Ryder Cup. Um, I asked Shane Lowry a similar question, but um, th is there any extra uh, sense of accomplishment making the team um, 
you know, you're in your early 30s as opposed to when you were early, things didn't come easy. You really had to work for this, kind of get over the hump and grind. Is there any extra sense of accomplishment that came with that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I think being 32 years old, it means a lot more now than it would be if I had made this my first or second year on tour. I mean, I've this is my 10th year on tour. Um, I've tried to make this tournament, um, what, four or five times and haven't made a team, but put in a lot of hard work the last couple of years, and this has definitely been a goal of mine. It would have been – I wouldn't have had the career in this game that I've wanted if I never made a Ryder Cup and had a chance to, to bring the trophy back home. So um, it definitely is more of a sense of, a, of an accomplishment and kind of shows, I don't know, all the work I've put in the last couple of years has, has mean something, and um, I'm definitely glad to, glad to be here. Terrific. All right, let's hit the floor. Daniel, start us off. Six. Kind of feels like with the tournament not starting today, it, it feels like this week has already it been so long. When, when you have that combined with, like John mentioned, your weight to, to play in this, is there ever is there a sense of like let, let's get this show on the road by now? For sure, for sure. There, there's been a lot of build up the last couple of weeks after I knew I was going to be a captain's pick. After I got the call from Strickers, it's just been uh, a lot of build up, um, which is fine. It, it definitely feels like a major. Um, but I, I'm ready to get this the, the show on the road. I mean, we we've played enough practice rounds. I, I know I know the holes out here. Uh, I know the wind's going to change. But um, that's what it's about. I, I love the build up to this tournament and and with the pairings coming out um, tonight. It's uh, it's fun. It, it, everybody's waited for this tournament for a while, and I know the fans in Wisconsin here have waited a long time to watch some live golf, and uh, I think they're going to get a good show. And you mentioned the golf course aesthetically. It looks really different from what you guys see on a weekly basis on the PGA Tour. Does it, does it play that different, or does it actually are the aesthetics kind of misleading in that way? Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely looks like a Lynx course, but it's not playing that way. Um, the fairways are decently soft. The greens are decently soft. Um, you can't really run shots around the green, bounce stuff into the green. Um, but it's awesome. I, mean, I love this kind of golf. I love when it plays hard like this, windy, and... Um, it's going to be a grind out there. I think you're going to see a lot more pars win holes than you would in a normal Ryder Cup. Um, so it's going to be fun. Same neighbor at four, straight across. Hey, Harris, um, you mentioned being on the course and being ready to go. Daniel just said, you know, the preparation part, he just walked yesterday. He's like, we probably wouldn't do that if not for all the practice rounds. So has Steve's goal of being prepared and all that stuff kind of put you guys in that space? You kind of feel the same way that, you know, you're, you feel good about what you're going to see out there. Yeah, 100%. I think that's what Strick's motto was from the, from the get-go, is he's going to make us be the best prepared team um, and each player be the best prepared they can be. And I, I think that's how he preps for majors. I think that's how Tiger Woods preps for majors. So it's great to learn from those guys. And um, going in tomorrow, I mean, you, you kind of have that out of your mind of I'm prepared, I'm ready to go, and, and just go out there and play golf. Um, so I think we're all – Ready to go. We're just kind of putting the last finishing touches on on getting prepared and, and feeling good about tomorrow. Um, I think you have a follow-up question, right? Yeah, I've, I've, I guess I guess two quick ones. Um, can you speak to to your working relationship with Eric a little bit and maybe the role of that he has this week with you? I mean, it's obviously being a different <laughs> different kind of setting, different requirements or asks of him. So, um, can you speak to that a little bit for this week? Yeah, we, we have a great relationship. I mean, I've been with Eric for probably three years now, so he's kind of seen me at my lowest of the low and the highest of the high. So he's he's seen me in every situation. And um, he, he's one of the most even-keeled guys out there. And I, I know this tournament means a lot to him. This is his third Ryder Cup of caddy for Jeff Overton, Anthony Kim, and, and now myself. So he's he's been in this environment before, and I know it means a lot to him. Coming back to Wisconsin, he grew up from about an hour away from here, so he's going to have a lot of a lot of family and friends out here. So it's it's going to mean that much more to him. I know you're not really going off site too much, but any local knowledge <laughs> that he can know? Um, sure. I mean, more just the weather. Like, man, it's yeah. cold out here, windy. I mean, especially this course with the wind is uh, it doesn't really get blocked much. So so your your ball is going to get hit by the wind from start to finish, and we don't see that a ton. Um, playing your normal American courses in the trees and whatnot. Um, but that, that's something we, we've had to work on a little bit this week and, and getting used to some of that. Right, we're going to go virtual here, beam out with Benzin. Benzin, 
Benzin, go ahead. Go You're ahead. with uh, Harris. Well, first of all, congratulations and welcome to Wisconsin. Uh, I have a question regarding the golf equipment. Do they give you any type of enhanced uh, new technology to try at the Ryder Cup? <clears throat> no, I, normally at a, at a regular PGA Tour event, I'm, I'm with Ping, so I, I play all Ping clubs, and we have the equipment trailer there, and we have our equipment guys on the range with us. Um, but I actually haven't seen any of those guys this week. It's been pretty strict with COVID, the, keeping us in the bubble. Um, but I, I normally don't like to try any new clubs, but if I'm at home in an off week, so I'm sticking with all 14 clubs, grips, ball, everything I've played for probably the last year so. No, I mean, that's the last thing you want to do is come to a big tournament like this and start switching up stuff. So um, I, I think you would find that with a lot of guys on our team of, of we're not really changing anything and sticking sticking with what got us here. We're going to go to 19. Jeff's going to get us back on track. <laughs> hey, Harris, uh, two for you. If uh, Given your proximity to Davis Love and his vast experience in this event, how much have you been able to lean on him? Yeah, uh, him and Zach Johnson both both live in Seattle, and I actually went to lunch with Zach um, last week and bounced a lot of questions off of him. He, he kind of prepared of what this week was going to be like, um, especially all the dinners, the functions, practice rounds. It, it can be a long week, so you got to kind of pace yourself. And when you do have downtime, get rest and, and get treatment, do your thing. Um, but it's awesome having those guys. I've I grew up watching Davis and idolizing Davis's game, and um, he's been, been such a positive role model for me and a lot of guys in Sea Island of helping us out. And I mean, that guy's been been through everything, winning 30, 20, 30 plus times on tour, playing in I don't know how many Ryder Cups, being the captain. I mean, he he's done everything you can in the game of golf, and it's awesome to be around him a lot. And and hopefully a lot of his stuff can rub off on me. And you mentioned up front, you know, you've waited a while to get to this event. I'm sure you come in with certain expectations. Uh, has anything this week, any part of the week, exceeded your own expectations? Yeah, it's just a lot of fun being around the guys in the team room and at dinners outside the golf course because you spend all year playing these playing with these guys and playing in big tournaments, and, and you don't really get to spend that quality time with them off the golf course and learn about their interests and their wives' interest off the course. So it's it's been really cool for me to, to get to these know these guys on a more personal level and um, enjoy that camaraderie that we, we get in the team room. Okay, we're going to beam out one more time. Peter Santo, go ahead. You're with Will. Or, excuse me, uh, with Harris. A lot, a lot gets made about the golf balls in uh, foursomes, having to learn another player's golf ball. How important is that? And... What is the kind of testing process like? Yeah, I think you always want to be hitting your ball on an iron shot or approach to the green. So it, it less matters what you tee off with. Um, so if I played alternate shot, I would, if I was teeing off, I would play my partner's ball off the tee. That way he could be approaching the green with his own golf ball because spin, spin matters a lot more when you're hitting an iron shot. And I play a softer golf ball, so, um, Guys might not like playing my golf ball into the into the wind or into a green. They might spin it too much. So I think off the tee, it, it doesn't matter as much. Into the greens, it matters a lot. So you'll you'll see a lot of guys play their partner's ball off the tee. We're gonna go over here in house number five. Yeah, hi. Um, on the six rookies, do you think that affects the way the team operates for better or for worse? And and has Steve mentioned you know the precedent from? 08 when he was one of six rookies and, and they won. Yeah, I mean, he uh, he kind of gave me some advice on him being a rookie and kind of what to expect. But I, I would see the, the pairings more so with, with a veteran and a rookie. I don't, I don't know how many, especially right off the bat, how many two rookies he's going to put together, um, which I understand that. And he kind of told me that yesterday. We we're kind of in between some pairings, but I, I definitely understand what he's going what why he's pairing certain players with certain players. And 
Um, he's, he's had a lot of experience in this thing and then kind of knows what that first tee is going to feel like and, and the jitters and the excitement of, of getting the round started. So I know they put a lot of thought in these pairings and we're going we're gonna to send out the, the right ones. And then do you feel like a, a group within a group, you know, as, a, as the six of you, or is it just everyone's too disparate for that? Do we feel an agreement? I, I, like a, a group within a group. Oh, yeah, yeah, like the, the pods or, or like the rookies being. Well, either, I mean, yeah, either. It, it's weird being the second oldest guy on the team, and I'm a, I'm a rookie. I don't really feel like a rookie. Um, I mean, I, I was watching Morikawa play college golf a couple years ago, and Scotty Scheffler I played in the U.S. Open with um, when he was still an amateur. So I've known these guys for a long time, and I don't quite feel like a rookie. I'm a rookie in this format, but, I mean, I've been out here on tour for 10 years. Uh, I feel like I've experienced a lot. So um, to me, I'm ready to tee up with these guys and hopefully can bring the experience I've had over the last 10 years to, to this tournament. Straight back, 23. You talked about what Davis and Zach said about preparing for the weekend. What advice did they give that stuck out about the weekend itself? Is it something where you kind of have to be there to kind of experience it, or did they give you any kind of advice of how it's going to be different? Yeah, um, we talked about um, if I'm not playing a morning session or afternoon session, kind of how to handle that because obviously we have our all, all of our routines we do every week of the year playing PJ Tour events or majors. Um, but that goes out the window a little bit because you want to be here for your team. You want to be – and I, I want to experience all there is to this tournament. Um, if I'm not playing in the morning, I want to be on that first tee and, and feel the energy, feel the excitement. Um, so it's just stuff like that, what to expect and, and kind of how to handle those different situations. Okay, we're going to wrap it up here on 19 with Jeff. Harris, I'm guessing maybe down in that Naples event you play a little bit of foursomes. But since Walker Cup, how much have you played foursomes? And – what are your thoughts on that event? Yeah, I um, haven't played a whole lot other than playing with uh, Kuchar a lot, and we've had a lot of success, um, albeit it was modified all certain shot. But I've, I've learned a lot from him. I, I've played a lot of, good, a lot of golf with Kuch. Um, might give him a shout this afternoon for any kind of last-minute advice he has. He's, he's been a great mentor of mine. And, um, yeah, we've, we've had a lot of success, and I've, I've picked up a lot of tips over the years from from playing with him on alternate shot strategy and little tidbits of, of what to do in certain situations. So um, I've definitely had a lot of guys around me that have, have helped me, and um, I, I can soak in whatever they have to say. Is it hard to find comfort in that format just because you don't play it much? Yeah, I mean, it, I feel like it's kind of uncomfortable for anybody. Um, going a few holes without hitting a driver or going a few holes without hitting a chip or a putt, you just gotta you gotta be so adaptable in that format, and and uh, I think it's a lot of fun to play. Um, it's really hard, but you have to know your partner well, and and you're gonna you're gonna both hit bad shots, but you gotta pick each other up and, and keep going. So I think it's a a very unique format in this game, but but it's a lot of fun to play, and I, I enjoy it. We are joined by U.S. Ryder Cup captain Steve Stricker. Uh, Captain, uh, we have pairings and we have matchups too. Um, let's speak at, uh, just for, in generalities for your four pairings. Um, how how do you feel about it? You must feel pretty good, uh, and we're on the cusp of uh, getting this thing going. Huh? <clears throat> yeah, to your last part there. How yeah, how excited we are and everybody is to get this thing going finally. You know, it's been three years, and and you come in here on Sunday evening, and you know the the practice rounds are great, but yet, you know, you have Friday in the back of your mind and you're just looking forward to getting out there and getting it going. But, yeah, I feel great about our pairings. Um, you know, some um, teams that have played together, you know, over the years, whether in Ryder Cups or some President's Cups. So, yeah, we uh, we wouldn't put them out there if we didn't feel good about them. Let me just put it that way. So we, we're extremely excited about how these guys are playing and um, the order in which they're going out. Okay, let's have some questions. I guess we'll start straight across on number three. Hey, Steve. Um, a few of us did some just predictions for fun, and almost everybody got the four pairs that the U.S. was putting out because it seems like you've had them play together, and it's been pretty clear, and they've played in the past. Europe, on the other hand, seems totally unpredictable and, and very surprising. You probably weren't giving a lot of thought to them beforehand, but looking at it now, 
did you, what do you think about their pairings, and did you anticipate any of this? You know, I, I didn't, and I didn't even try to an anticipate. Um, you know, they're all great players. We, we were trying to take care of ourselves. Um, you know, I'm paying attention to my team. Um, you know, we talked occasionally about maybe who they're going to put out, but it doesn't matter really. I mean, they're all such great players. They're all uh, highly ranked players, and, and we know that we're going to have to play our best to to beat them. So, um, you know, we had an idea that Rory and Rom would probably go one and four, you know, and, and that's pretty much all we knew or really thought about. We didn't know who their guys were going to be that they were going to be paired with, but we kind of had that figured out for the most part. And um, so we uh, we tried to act accordingly as well. But, yeah, we, we um, other than that, we didn't take the time to try to figure it out. Gotcha. Okay, 19, Jeff. Steve, I, if I remember right, you put Daniel and Brooks together when you were captain at Liberty, right? I and think so, yeah. They yeah, played what, together before. What do you before. see with those two? What do they bring out of each other? They uh, they play a lot of golf at home together. They enjoy being with one another. Um, Daniel is a uh, wonderful foursomes player. You know, he's uh, he controls his ball really nicely and uh, good short game, great putter. Um, yeah, so he's just kind of a natural fit for the foursomes and... and um, they like playing together, bottom line, and, and they do well together. Um, they, uh, they're they excited to go out tomorrow and, and try to get a point. Right behind me, Captain uh, Alex, 20. Hey, Strick, when, um, when you were naming your six captain's picks, you mentioned how length was very important, yet the longest guy on your team is sitting in the morning. Could you explain why? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're we're trying to make sure that everybody gets a little bit of rest, too. Is That's in the back of our mind, and... Um, you know, yeah, I mean, we can't play everybody every session, right? I mean, four people have to sit and, um, but he's going to get his turn at some point. And, um, the, the, the real good thing is that all these guys have bought in, you know, they, they know the plan for the most part. They, uh, we've communicated that to them and we're up front with them and they, uh, understand it and are willing to do anything for the betterment of the team. In your particular case, um, will all of your guys play today, tomorrow? You'll have to wait and see, Alex. <laughs> okay, and one last thing. Did you did, did anything happen this week? Is that, that a Cubs hat on there, or what is that hat? Yes, it is. Okay. I didn't know if it was a Chicago hey, Bears hat. Yeah, well, you almost got filleted Yeah, out there. you know what? That didn't turn out so good. But, <laughs> but you know, I, I tried to explain myself as we kept going there. I, I still root for the Packers. Let me just get that. When you have Straight. to explain yourself, you're in trouble. You yeah, know I know. You're okay. right. Um, did anything that happened this week influence what what you have on paper today? Anything that happened this week influence what these matchups are? Yeah. No. Bob on two. Uh, Steve, I assume you have a plan already for the afternoon. Is there anything that could change it, or is it you know bar? Aside from an injury or an illness, obviously, that could. But I mean, just talk about the way somebody plays or anything. Do you have a set pairings for the afternoon? I know you won't tell us, but could anything change that, or do you think you will stick with that no matter no, what? No, we're going to stick with the afternoon plan. It, it was put in front of them on Monday, and we've stuck with it, and we're going to stick with it. Oh, the, the other thing is, was there any disappointment from anybody about not playing early or because you said this not so early they got on board? Not at all. Uh, again, um, these guys have been incredible. I, I can't stress it enough, really. And, and, um, and again, it's about the communication that we've had, the captains and myself, and being up front with them and, and just letting them know what we're thinking so there's no curveballs. And, uh, you know, we've heard it multiple times if, from all the players. If, you know, if you want to play me once or all five, you know, that's up to you, meaning the captains, and uh, just so we can try to win this cup. Straight back, uh, Michael, number four. Thank you. Uh, Steve, I see uh, Phil out there during the practice rounds, and he's talking and talking and talking to you, and I'm wondering if you can give us some sense of what he's actually talking about. To me? Yeah. Oh, we talk, we've talked a lot of, about a lot of different things. Um, you know, we, we've talked about players, you know, picks, or, you know, uh, pairings, I should say. 
Uh, we've talked about golf swings. Um, I enjoy talking with Phil, and, and we're lucky to have him, you know, to be a part of this team. And, um, you know, it was un unknown for a while whether he was going to be a part of this team as a player or a uh, captain. And I had reached out to him, you know, quite a long time ago about being a part of this team, actually last year. And then I, we keep touching base, and then he wins the PGA Championship. So we talk again. And um, so it's been an ongoing process with Phil, but I knew I wanted him here. And I, he's great for the team. He's great in the, in the room. And, um, yeah, so we, he talks all the time. He talks, you know, about it, and, and we have talked about a lot of different things. So it's 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 wonderful to have him around. Is Bryson sort of his? Is does he mind Bryson in a way? Yeah, they get along great. They uh, Phil finds Bryson very interesting and is trying to learn things from Bryson. I think too, and I think Bryson feels like he's trying to help Phil in some ways too. So they have this rapport with one another, and they they enjoy being with one another and. Um, yeah, so I see those two guys being in each other's pocket for the rest of the week. Thank you. Yeah. Jim on six. Hey, Steve, at the outset, you mentioned it's a three-year run-up um, to plan for the week, you know, Sunday through. Um, now that they get, you, you're ready to hit balls on Friday, has that worked the way you, you had hoped when you see the guys get together and the way they're loose, the things they've said? Has your – I mean, I guess you'll know how they play, but up to right. now, do you feel like that that is – you know, the goal has been accomplished in your mind. Very much so. Yeah. It, you know, um, you know, obviously the most important part is coming up, right? I mean, the playing and them trying to win a point and just trying to put them in a position to play great golf. And so far, I think we've done that. Um, the guys are playing great. Uh, and like I said, they're all on board. We're going to beam out to Ian Slattery. Ian, you are up with the U.S. captain. Hi, Steve. Uh, Hi. How important was continuity when making those pairings in either proving pairings from previous Ryder or President's Cups or new partnerships with similar or s same golf balls that they used? Yeah, all that is, is taken into effect. Um, you know, Xander and Patrick have had success in foursomes in the President's Cup, so, you know, we thought it was a natural fit for them to do foursomes here tomorrow morning. Um, yeah, and we look at the golf balls. I mean, sometimes it's just very difficult. You know, we had some guys trying other guys' balls, and it's it's a challenge at times. So that determines sometimes the pairings and, and what you can do going forward. So it is. It's a big puzzle trying to get all the pieces put together. And, uh, you know, you rely on feedback from the players. You rely on feedback from the captains. And, um, yeah, it's a, it's a challenge, but um, one that – you know, we're excited to be a part of. Bob, number two. Uh, Steve, how, how do you think now, uh, look, we had some rain earlier, obviously, but how do you think the course will play? Are the greens as firm as you would like them? Uh, you, uh, you know, is the course going to play firm and fast even with the rain, or can you say? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, um, you know, the rules are that we, we get it into the condition, you know, all the way up to the Sunday before, and then it that condition is kind of maintained throughout. So that's the goal is that that condition will be kind of maintained, and it has been. Um, you know, we can't – we don't have any say on what Mother Nature does and, and provides, you know, as far as rain goes or wind. And, and today they were getting a little bit – not really that firm, but just uh, faster, you know, with all that wind and, and borderline almost too fast for that kind of wind. So – but the good news is the wind looks like it's, you know, going to lay down a little bit. Uh, still breezy, but not as much as the last couple of days. So, but the course is in great shape. The guys think it's uh, you know a good setup, and everyone that I've heard from both sides have have enjoyed it so far. Front right number three, Steve. You've been here before in Presidents Cups. You're at the point where you've had total control, and now you have to relinquish it and basically sit back and watch. What does that feel like, and how does it change your own nerves? I'm going to enjoy it. You know, I, at, to this point, it's uh, been a lot of work, you know, and, and there's still more work to be done for sure. You know, we still have to watch some golf. We still have to gain some more information the way I've been talking to the assistant captains. And, and you know, you want to look forward to Saturday and you want to try to get a plan. And, and we do have somewhat of a plan, but it's more about, you know, watching these guys play now, um, getting some feedback from them and the caddies and, 
the assistance and then making the plan for Saturday. But, um, yeah, it's in their hands now. You know, they, uh, they, uh, they're playing great and, and they're excited to get going. I mean, I can't tell you how excited they are to, you know, to get going and get that first tee ball in the air tomorrow. You going front left with Jeff? See, uh, it was the captain's call, right, to start with either format. And I'm curious why you chose foursomes. Was it the fast start at Hazeltine or? Yeah, I mean, it, stats have shown over the years that um, that's a better format for us. Um, yeah, so we we wanted to kind of stay with that plan, and and that's what we're doing. Steve, four rookies uh, going out for you tomorrow, a uh, Ryder Cup <clears throat> rookies. Um, what's that night's sleep uh, here on Thursday night going into that morning? You were in that those shoes yeah. in 2008. Um, yeah, it's it's a week where you don't get a lot of sleep. You know, you got to try to make sure you do that. And I've tried to give that to the guys, and I'll do that same thing tonight. You know, we'll have a quick dinner and tell them to get to bed. So uh, it's a big day tomorrow, and um, but it is. It's it's uh, it occupies your mind, and it's tough to get some sleep. So you know, it's an exciting time. You know, I mean, we're all excited. I'm sure you guys are all excited as well. So uh, we're definitely looking forward to it. All right, we're going to wrap it up here with Alex with the final question. Go ahead. Sir. Trick, uh, Pat Hurst at the Solheim Cup said she wouldn't play anybody five. She thought it was just too much. Do you feel the same way? We we kind of do at times, you know, and and it, you know, that could, <clears throat> excuse me, that could morph into something different when we start watching these guys and if you need to lean on some players more than others. But, yeah, we're trying, that's our focus, is try to make sure that guys get rest. And it's a big golf course. And then when you have conditions like we've had the last couple of days, it can kind of really beat you up. So, yeah, we're uh, we're conscious of that and and trying to um, look at that going forward as well. That's definitely on our on our plate to try to make sure that guys are getting the rest.